So in this presentation, we're going to look at the sub-main circuit my students have been wiring up for me, a steel wire armoured circuit on cable tray feeding a distribution board somewhere else in a location. So we've got here the switch disconnector fuse, often called a switch fuse on site, is say located in the basement of a block of flats, and a sub-main circuit goes up to each floor in turn to feed the consumer unit in each dwelling. I want to take a look at some of the connections within the switch fuse and some of the issues we have with the circuit protective conductor in there. Also for our job, we've actually introduced metallic fixings. I know the job is very short. It's obviously moving towards the principle that we're going to need to use a non-combustible fixing suggested, say every three meters in an installation. I know we're very short, but we are at the stage where we're still trying to implement the 18th edition wiring regs, even though it doesn't come into full effect until January 2019. So we have got non-combustible cable fixings, in this case cable ties, that we're using on this job. The switch fuse itself for us has a 60 amp fuse in it and the enclosure is rated at 60 amps. They do do an 80 amp and they do do a 100 amp version for a domestic. However, physically, so this being a 100 amp fuse and this being the 60 amp I replaced, physically they are the same size. So care must be taken that we install the appropriate size fuse. And as we've only got a 2.5 millimeter squared steel armored circuit for a college job, we're gonna be replacing that with a 20 amp fuse from the 60 that it came with. So I wanna take a look at the connections within this switch fuse. We'll look at how the circuit protective conductor is gonna be terminated and how important it is that we make a connection to the earth bar present in the back of the enclosure. Let's look at that in the next part of the presentation. So let's have a look inside our Wilex switch disconnector fuse or switch fuse. The supply feeding this is coming into the bottom of the isolator itself. So in our case, it will be the tails coming in line neutral and earthing conductor into the bottom. We've got a double pole switch, isolating both live conductors, both line and neutral when operated. And on the outgoing side, we have the final circuit labeled load, line, neutral, and circuit protective conductor going out. We stated earlier that the fuse that it comes with is rated at 60 amps, and will need to be changed for one rated at 20 amps for our final circuit. This Wilex isolator has some subtle differences as well with the fact that our connections both on the load and on the supply side are not using a plus minus head of which we've been using on our torque screwdrivers. We've got to work towards at college owning a set of torque screwdrivers that will incorporate Allen keys. So at the moment, we're just going to be tightening them up using the appropriate size Allen key. And there's two different sizes. The live conductors use the slightly larger one in order to get it to the right tightness. And there is a smaller one for the circuit protective conductor and the earthing conductor. So just be aware there's two different size Allen keys in order to tighten up the connections. And we haven't currently got one that we can use as a torque screwdriver with an Allen key style head in it. It's important to note the following as well. We have a earth bar down here, which is not physically connected to the incoming earthing conductor or the outgoing circuit protective conductor. So therefore we have to make a connection to here in order to earth the metal enclosure. So that's something that's definitely got to be taken into consideration and we can't purely use this earth terminal here as our connection for our CPC. So earthing conductor comes in, comes through and earths our outgoing circuit protective conductor of which we've swung that into our earth terminal here and then we've gone out separately to the earthing ring here. So we've earthed the armoring of the steel wire armoured and we've got our separate CPC and circuit going out within one of the cores of the steel wire armoured. Next, let's prove the fact that this earth bar here isn't physically connected to the earth within the installation. So it doesn't connect to the incoming earthing conductor and isn't connected to the outgoing circuit protective conductor. Hence, we have to make our own connection to here in order to connect the exposed conductive part to earth. So let's have a look at the connections for the three core steel wire armoured. Three core colours being brown, black, grey. Our outgoing line conductor of our steel wire armoured comes through the switch fuse. The fuse is going to be replaced with a 20 amp fuse and comes out and round of our final circuit. The neutral is actually going to be the grey conductor identified with blue sleeving as our neutral. We're trying to denutralize black, so we're not going to use black as a neutral. We're going to use the grey identified with blue sleeving. We've now got this earth connection through a fly lead down to earth our earth terminal. 
and we're going out from here with our final circuit. So the black conductor of the steel we're armoured is connected into the earth bar at the bottom and identified with green and yellow sleeving. So recap then, so we've got our line is brown, our grey is identified with blue sleeving as our neutral, our black is identified with green and yellow sleeving as our circuit protective conductor on our outgoing steel we're armoured. So as we look inside the Wilex switch disconnector fuse, we can see the earth bar at the bottom. Logic suggests to us that this earth bar here, connected to the exposed conductive part, the metal clad box itself, would be in some ways connected to either the incoming earthing conductor or the outgoing circuit protective conductor. But it isn't. It says in the manufacturer's instructions, the metal case unit must be earthed to the earth terminal in the base of the metal enclosure. Let's prove that it isn't earthed. So if I take my own meter, okay, and I connect one crocodile clip onto the earth bar, if I probe the other one onto the earth bar, we can see we have a reading approximately of zero. Okay. If I now connect it here to where the earthing conductor would be connected, let's see if we get a reading. I have no reading, in other words, an infinite reading. So there is no physical connection between where the incoming earthing conductor comes and the earth terminal. What about the outgoing side? Once again, no connection between the two points. Therefore, if we don't take round a separate green and yellow conductor to the earth bar, we won't have earthed the metal enclosure. And if we were using it for an outgoing part of the earthing system, say to earth a steel wire armoured or an individual conductor within the armour in itself, again, it will not be physically connected to the earthing conductor, CPC, uh, family member, whichever one you want to go for. It will not be connected. Let's go back to the original job and see what we have did just to confirm that we put that in and how important it is that we do it. So we're back at our install and we can see now how important it was that we put this CPC round and connected it to the earth bar at the bottom. So let's prove now that they are connected together. So we go on to the earth bar. If I probe onto my CPC, I've got a reading of 0 0.02. So in other words, they are physically now connected together. Prove that out of the bottom one as well. So I'll go into the bottom one. And again, we've proved now they're physically connected together. If I hadn't have put this link round to the earth bar itself and I was using this as a connection to earth for my outgoing circuit or to earth the exposed conductive part, it wouldn't actually be physically connected to the incoming earth without adding in this link all the way round to the earth bar. I hope this video has been some help.